UI Toolkit is Unity's new UI solution. It is virtually better than the default UI system in just about every way. I especially love how it has easing built right in, and I will show you how to do that. But this workflow is a little bit more complicated and it's harder to get your head around at first. So my goal with this video is to give you a brief and easy introduction to UI Toolkit by building a simple main menu. Ready? Let's go. So I have an empty scene here. To get started, let's right click in our hierarchy and select UI Toolkit and click UI Document. And I'm just gonna name this main menu. So this created a game object with a UI document component, and it also created a UI toolkit folder in our project. It has some panel settings and a theme style sheet. Don't delete the theme style sheet or your UI will not show up on the screen. Now our UI document is looking for a visual tree asset. So let's create one. In our UI toolkit folder, let's create UI toolkit, UI document. This is gonna generate a .uxml file or a visual tree asset. I'm gonna call it main menu visual tree. And let's plug that into our UI document component. Now, before we open this up, let's go to our panel settings for a sec. I'd like our main menu to scale with screen size so that no matter what resolution, it scales with that. And I'm gonna set this to 1920 by 1080 as well. So to actually build our main menu, we need to go to the UI builder and we can double click this to open that up. So if you look, this really isn't too far off from the Unity window, actually. We have an inspector over here, our viewport here, a hierarchy here, as well as a library of containers, controls, and numeric fields that we can drag in if we want. First, I'm gonna select our visual tree asset here, and I'm gonna change the canvas size to the resolution for our game. And you can hit fit to canvas to get this to fill nicely. So first, I'm just gonna get a heading to show up. To keep things nice and organized, I'm gonna drag in a visual element. You can think of this as a container. In fact, let's go ahead and name it container over here. Now inside this container, I'm going to add in a label. Now, before we go any further, this is the perfect place to introduce style sheets and use them to our advantage. Up here, if we click plus, we can create a new USS, which stands for Unity Style Sheet. These are files that are very similar to CSS files if you've ever done any web development. Do not let that scare you off though, because we can do everything here in the UI Builder if we want. We don't have to manually type it out, though you can do it that way if you want. I'm gonna create a new USS and call it Main Menu Style. Now within that style sheet, we can create what are called selectors and apply those selectors to as many elements in our hierarchy as we want. So let's create one and call it dot header. Now let's apply that selector to our label. You can drag and drop it on. And if you don't wanna do that, you can go over here and search it and press enter. You'll know when it's applied when it's highlighted like it is here. Now to show you how useful style sheets are, I'll temporarily create a new header. First, let's call this one header and call this header two and make sure we apply the dot header style sheet to it as well. Another nice visual way you can tell the style sheet has been applied is if we highlight over the selector, you'll see it highlights both of the labels, which is great. I'm gonna select our header selector and make its font size 40 and make it white. So already, hopefully that makes it clear. Any changes we make to the style sheet changes all the items that have that style sheet applied to them. Now, of course, you can overwrite the style sheet and change individual properties. I'll make this second one black. Now, kind of like prefab game objects, it bolds the property overwrite. So now if I change the color on my style sheet, it's only going to affect the first one because I'm overwriting it in the individual property here. You can undo the overwrite by right clicking and it gives us the option to unset just that one property or all of them. You can hit Control plus S to save. Now you'll notice that we cannot see this in our scene view, which is probably my favorite thing. No more UI covering up your game objects in the scene view. But if you go to the game view, our text is right there, whether we hit play or not, as long as this script is active. As soon as it's not, that text disappears. All right, so next let's set up a couple of buttons. Go ahead and delete the second label there. We don't need it. And also let's change this to say main menu. And now I'm gonna drag a button on there. Now let's create a dot button selector in our style sheet and apply that to our button. I'm gonna change the text size to 20 and change the width. You'll notice that auto just fills out the whole visual element container that we set up. So I'm gonna change this to 220 pixels and 60 pixels tall. Let's center the alignment. If we go to border, we can actually round the corners. I'm gonna bring up the radius to 10 pixels. 
And if we go to background, we can change the color if we want. But actually, I'd rather use a button sprite. I got this pack from Unity's Dragon Crashers demo, which is linked in the description. So we can choose from a texture, a render texture, a sprite, or a vector, which is awesome. I'm just going to bring in a button sprite. I'm going to increase the margin at the top a little bit. And I'm going to make this one say start. Okay, now let's make another button and assign our button style sheet to it and make this one say settings. So let's do what we would do if this were a real game and make it not super ugly. I'll start by assigning a background. Again, I grabbed these from Unity's project, which is free. This is a nice 1920 by 1080 sprite. So in our visual element container here, let's assign a background to it. And I'll just select sprite. And there we go. I also brought in this font here from the same project. So I'm going to assign that font to our header style sheet and delete out the font asset. And I'm actually going to bring that up to like 100 and center it. And same with the button style sheets as well. I'm going to change the font and make them white. There we go. That's much better. So next, let's look at how to assign on click events to these buttons so that something actually happens in our game when we click on them. In our project, I'm going to create a new script called main menu events and attach it to our main menu game object and open it up. So first, to get UI toolkit elements, we need to add the Unity Engine.UI elements namespace. And I'm going to get a reference to two things, our UI document and our button. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, then thank you if you leave a like or a comment. So in Awake, I'm going to get a reference to our UI document. It's sitting as a component on this game object, so we can just do a get component call. And as for the button, the syntax is a little bit strange, but it's not too bad. We're going to reference our UI document and find the root visual element, meaning where the hierarchy starts in our UI document, then use .q, which is short for query, and we'll find the name of our button, which I actually forgot to do. So I'm going to go back and call this one start game button and this one settings. Now back in our script, I'll search for the string start game button. And this is going to return a visual element, but we can cast it as a button. Now we register a callback to the button. So we'll say button.register callback. And there's all sorts of event types you can choose from. I'm going to choose a click event. And we'll call a method called onPlayGameClick. And we'll set that up down here, which is going to need a click event passed in as a parameter. And we'll just throw a debug.log when we press it. I'm also going to unregister the event if we disable the game object, as that is good practice. Now you can see if we click play and I click this button, we get our log message. Now, if you have an event system in your project, the click event type we just registered to is actually tied to this left click here. You can see I added enter on my keyboard here. Now you can see if that is the selected button and I press enter, that works as well. Hopefully that is enough info to get you started if you want to make a menu that works with keyboard and gamepad as well. Now we might have a whole bunch of buttons, so it might be a good thing to know how to subscribe a whole bunch of buttons from a list instead of one at a time like we just did. Let's say, for example, we want to play a sound whenever we click a button. So to do that, I would set up a list of buttons. And instead of Q and passing in a string, I'm going to use query and the type button and use dot to list. Now I'll just do a for loop and register a callback for each button in the list. And we'll call a method called on all button click. And again, we'll unregister those in on disable as well. And what the heck, let's actually make it play a sound. So we'll grab an audio source. and we'll play it in our event here. I'll just quickly add an audio source here and assign this sound and make sure play on awake is off. There you go. Okay, now I wanna show you the built-in transition animations, which are easily my favorite part of this new system. 
you'll notice that on any of our elements, we have this transition animations right at the bottom here, but it's not quite as simple as just playing around with those values because we need to tell it what it's transitioning from and what are we transitioning to. So essentially we need a start and an end and we control the start and end through different selectors here. So let's animate our buttons when we hover our mouse over them. Now the cool thing is our start is already done because we already made a dot button selector. So to set up our end transition, let's create a new selector and call it dot button colon hover. Now the naming here is really important. You cannot just call this whatever you want. The hover that we assigned with a colon is called a pseudo class. And in the case of the hover pseudo class, it will call an event whenever we're hovering our mouse over a visual element. I will leave a link down below to all of the built-in pseudo classes for the UI toolkit. Now, the fact that we've added this pseudo class to our dot button selector means that it will apply to all of our visual elements that have the dot button selector applied to it. If I wanted, I could do the same thing for all labels, for example, and say label hover. What that would mean is the hover event would fire whenever I was hovering the mouse over any label in our menu. So pseudo classes and the naming convention, it's just something important to keep in mind. Now we said this dot button hover was our end transition. So let's change what we want to actually change it to. I'm going to scale the buttons up to 1.1 on the X and the Y and maybe tint them red as well. And finally, in order to actually trigger the animation, go back to our start element and change the duration to something above zero. If you want to test it in the UI builder, you can hit the preview button here. And if we highlight over our buttons, you can see they transition very nicely. You can add delays in there as well, and instead of transitioning all the changes we made all at once, we could do each one separately and stack them. It's very easy to do. And we have all these different easing options here, and I will leave a link for this easing graphic as well, but these are all of your standard easing options, and they will let you animate with some style very, very easily. If you are looking for more info on UI Toolkit, I will have a bunch of links down below, including Unity's UI Toolkit sample projects. There's actually two of them, but I recommend Quiz U to learn more about UI Toolkit because it's smaller and it's a lot easier to digest. There's also a whole UI Toolkit ebook, which is loaded with information. This system is still undergoing a lot of changes. Personally, I would use UI Toolkit for menu building in a commercial game now, but I would, for now, avoid it for your world space UI needs as it's currently a whole lot easier to do that with the old system. But for menus, this is far superior to the old system. That's all I got. Bye.